Hello everyone. For my AP research project, I will be researching the effect of dogs on a student's ability to concentrate. In high school, students experience many instances where it is difficult to concentrate in class. It is common to get easily distracted by outside noises. Stress is a major factor that has an, a significant impact on concentration. Defined by Aidan Moran, Director of the Psychology Research Laboratory in the University College of Dublin, concentration is a process that involves the ability to focus on the task at hand while ignoring distractions. Because of the pressures of academics, extracurricular activities, and social problems, it becomes hard for a student to focus on a task. A majority of the current research on human-dog interactions is mainly aimed towards participants such as young children, the elderly, and patients with illnesses. Teenagers in high school have not been tested in this study. This gap is important because there's no direct evidence toward the positive effect of dogs on teenagers and should be researched further. My goal for the research study is to find a way that will make it easier for students to concentrate in class while using the presence of a dog. If this study works, it will enhance the academic performance of students and will also create less stressful environments. In order to find out more on the subject, this research seeks to find to what extent can interacting with dogs prior to test taking yield a positive effect on a high school student's ability to concentrate on their schoolwork. Karen Hediger from the Institute for Interdisciplinary Research on the Human-Animal Relationship in Switzerland and Dennis Turner from the Institute for Animal Psychology in Switzerland assess the effect of the presence of dogs through neuropsychological concentration tasks on children in their study. The first test consists of a memory test where the students would listen to a sequence of numbers. The next test focuses on attention where it measures unbroken concentration with a time span of five minutes. The data from the study presents a reduction in aggressive interactions, enhancement of group activities, and improvement of social cohesion. Hediger and Turner's study supports the idea that dogs positively or have no effect in learning situations for children, but they do not negatively affect them. In a study conducted by Kristen Lund, a director of psychotherapy programs, college students were asked to note the change in their feelings during finals week, before and after they interacted with a dog. It was established that interacting with animals, especially dogs, is an important resource for students to manage college stress, resulting from homesickness, student debt, and a change in environment. Stress is how the brain and body respond to any demand, such as exercise, work, school, or traumatic events, which can affect the human, a human being's health, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. Chai Ting et al. from the Center for Intelligent Signal and Imaging Research and the University of Technology Patronus in Malaysia explained that stress has also been reported to facilitate and impair both learning and memory. Emotional experiences are critical in every aspect of cognition and influences a human being's ability to learn and remember, especially in academic settings. Understanding and regulating emotion is essential to the development of enhanced learning programs. My hypothesis my hypothesis is if a dog is present in the academic classroom setting before the student takes a test or works on an assignment, then the student will experience increased concentration. Concentration and attention have a connection to stress relief because studies indicate that stress inhibits learning performance. I believe that the results of my study will indicate a positive effect from Karen and Karen Hediger and Dennis Turner's method in Can Dogs Increase Children's Attention and Concentration Performance? They found similar results and none of the articles in my research express a negative effect on a dog's presence. I will be conducting an experimental method to gather a mixed type of data. This study will consist of student volunteers who will take a series of tests to assess their attention and memory to find the effect of dogs on their concentration. This qualitative portion is the stress and mood questionnaire, where I will be asking about the emotions of each student and they will rate it on the Likert scale from one to five. 
The quantitative portion is the concentration task where I will calculate the correct and wrong answers and then again record the changes. For my experiment, students will arrive in the intended classroom with their assigned consent forms and then they will take the mood and stress questionnaire. This questionnaire will ask questions from the perceived stress scale and will ask about the participants load of schoolwork from that day and the next day. It will also include a question on what they normally do to de-stress. Mood and stress levels are crucial because emotional experiences and how stressed the student is affects the cognitive abilities and concentration. Then the participants will take two separate tests, one focused on memory and the other focused on attention. Both concentration tasks have the individual subtests and each participant will take the test in order to establish a baseline. For the memory test, the first half of the test will require the student to listen to a sequence of numbers, wait until I finish the sequence, and then write it down on the test. For the second half, the student will look at the PowerPoint presentation, which will contain a series of shapes for about 10 seconds per slide. The, these tests evaluate a student's ability to recall information and the processes of working memory. For the attention test, there are two subtests, the Stroop Color and Word test and the, a revised version of the D2R test. In the strip color and word test, the participant needs to write the color that they see, not the color they read. This test measures reaction time and the ability to inhibit cognitive interference. The second test, the D2R test, was select the letter D with two marks out of the Ds and Ps with one to four marks. This test measures conventional sustained attention, the basic ability to look at, listen to, and think about classroom tasks over a period of time. After the test, the students are allowed to interact with a registered service dog however they please, as long as the dog is not harmed. Because she is a registered service dog, the dog is trained to be calm and alert in case of emergency. Participants can simply watch the dog playing with the other students, pet the dog, give the dog treats for completing a, a command, and play with the dog toys accessible. This time span will last about 15 minutes and will allow the participants to return to the other test room after their interaction. Here is a picture of Chance, the service dog in training, who participated in my study. She was almost a year old at the time of my study. Her breed is a golden retriever, and she is from the Seeing Eye Dog Center in Morristown, New Jersey. For the final stage of my study, the participants must take the post-interaction test and questionnaire. The participants will take an additional mood and stress questionnaire and will know the changes of feelings, if any, after the interaction with the dog. They will also be asked to describe what they thought contributed to the change. Then the students will take the series of concentration tasks again, which is similar to the prior task. It will be the same format, but different questions to ensure that the students are not just working from memory from the last test. After the day of my experiment, I will collect all the data from the test day. Then I will calculate the correct wrong answer ratio in specific concentration tasks, record the changes of emotions from the questionnaire, and note the interactions of the students in a Google Doc. I will com compile all the newly found data into my method to establish if it works. After a thorough investigation, my data analysis indicated that all of the students felt stressed in some type of way in the last month because the data indicates a moderate to high perception of their self-reported stress, with 67% of the students have a high, having a high stress level. My previous research established that stress impairs learning and memory, which are key components to link to, link to concentration. In these charts, a range of emotions were stated and there was a significant change in the mood, in the student's mood from before to after the interaction with the dog. 100% of the student, student participants felt tired and stressed prior to the experiment taking place. After the interaction with the dog, most of the participants felt happy, which is a major shift in emotion. Emotions influence cognitive processes which are needed for concentration. 
By the end of the experiment, all of the participants felt that the interaction with the dog had a positive effect on their concentration task that were taken after. This chart explains that all students were on the positive side of the scale and none were neutral or negative. For the qualitative aspect of my method, the mental and emotional factor of my study shows promise that the presence of dog, dogs have a positive effect on a student's concentration. As I collected data for each sub subtest, I based my analysis on the rate of change from pre-interaction to post-interaction. This chart shows the ideal participants record for test scores on the concentration task. This student had a 60 to 20% increase in all of their subtests, which means that their cognitive processes enhanced functioning due to the presence of a dog prior to the test. Out of the 48 subtests, there are only six cases of decrease in correct answers. The average change uh, for the first memory subtest, which focused on the sequence of numbers, was 5.50% increase. The second memory subtest, which was the sequence of shapes, had a 10.83% increase and the greatest out of all subtests. The first attention subtest, the Stroop color and word test had a 5.17% increase. And finally, the last attention subtest, the D2R test had a 2.50 increase. Based on the collection of data from the concentration task, the results display with a high level of confidence that there will be a positive effect, therefore proving my hypothesis. There were a few limitations which were encountered which affected my findings. The main issue was my small sample size of participants. All students who volunteered to participate in my study were from a, the same private high school. Therefore, there were not many factors of diversity and availability for scheduling. Another limitation was that I personally, that I personally had was timing. In order to do two sessions in a timely manner for the students, teachers, and owners of chance, I had to create a system where I can conduct two experiments overlapping each other. A final limitation would be the distraction factor of the dogs. A concern would be whether or not the dog distracted the students and was the initial break of focus from their concentration task. Despite the limitations on, on the study, the trends and patterns lead to a promising outcome. There have been similar studies focused on human-animal interactions, but studies such as this narrow the gap on specific topics and enhance the body of knowledge in the human population. I believe that I have found and analyzed, the data that I have found and analyzed proves to be substantial enough for other studies to replicate and improve due to my lack of resources as a student in high school. It is important to add to the understanding of cognitive processes impacted by the presence of animals, especially dogs, or a man's best friend. Future research can narrow the gap even further by limiting the type of dog breed or how they affect the ability to concentrate. The findings of my study allows the implication that interactions with dogs prior to test taking and academic schoolwork have a positive effect on a student's ability to concentrate. Researchers looking to further strengthen my initial connection between concentration of high school students and interaction with animals, especially dogs, may conduct more extensive studies with a longer time frame and better test resources. This experiment is the beginning of future studies on similar topics to further educate the world on why human-animal interactions are beneficial in educational facilities. And finally, please see the following slides for the references used for my paper and methodology. Thank you.